Welcome back. This is part three of this series of videos. Um, in part two, we looked at how we can calculate the molar enthalpy of combustion given some experimental data. And one particular thing of note is the experimental values that we generate for the enthalpy of combustion are quite significantly different. They're quite significantly lower than the accepted or literature values for the enthalpy of combustion. These below here are some of the reasons as to why we end up with quite a low accuracy and specifically it's got to do with the presence of these systematic errors. So what can we actually do to improve on these practices so that we can end up with a value close to this accepted value? We can look at using a calorimeter known as a bomb calorimeter. This allows for a more accurate determination for the enthalpy of combustion. The reason for this is because it is a closed system, so we're not going to end up losing any uh, reactants and products to the surroundings. It is heavily insulated as well, so this uh, container would be extremely insulated. We include the addition of pure oxygen. What this will do is ensure the complete combustion of our fuel. We also have ignition wires that will provide the activation energy needed for this combustion reaction to take place. And we do have a quite extreme uh, volume of water that essentially will absorb the heat from this reaction within this sealed bomb here. And a motorized stirrer is designed to ensure that the water is thoroughly mixed and we end up getting a consistent temperature reading throughout the liquid. Bomb calorimeters are essentially the devices that we use to determine the accepted values for the enthalpies of different reactions. Um, they can also be used to determine the energy values which are quoted for many different foods and you see this on the back of your food packets. For the next part we're going to look at how we can use this formula for the enthalpy change to calculate temperature changes instead. Um, it is going to use this formula here and what we can do is just simply rearrange the equation. So if we do that, we get a formula of delta T being equal to delta H multiplied by 1,000 times N or divided by M times C. To look at how we can use this, we've got an example question three here. So given the enthalpy of combustion for ethanol is negative 1,371 kilojoules per mole. For part A, calculate the temperature change when 0 0.020 moles of ethanol is burned to heat 250.0 grams of water. If we use our formula here, we should have everything that is necessary. So we're just going to plug them in. So delta H being uh, the negative 1,371. I'm just going to leave that negative out because delta T is just going to result in a positive change. And given this is exothermic, we know this is going to be a temperature increase. This is going to be multiplied by 1,000, so converting the kilojoules per mole into joules per mole. Multiply that by the number of moles of our ethanol burned. Divide that by the mass of the water that's undergoing temperature change, and as well as the specific heat capacity of water. So if we do this, we plug it into our calculator, we should get an answer close to 26 degrees Celsius to two significant figures. Then in part B, calculate the final temperature reached if the initial temperature was 18 degrees Celsius. So considering the temperature change is essentially the difference between the final and initial temperature, if we are trying to calculate the final temperature, we can rearrange this equation. And we get that the final temperature is equal to the temperature change, uh, a positive value. Um, added to the initial temperature. So we know that the final temperature should be higher from a combustion reaction. So this will give us 26 degrees uh, Celsius as our temperature change. Add that to our 18 degrees Celsius as our starting temperature. And we get a final temperature of 44 degrees Celsius to two significant figures. To conclude this series of videos, uh, this is our last science understanding. So fuels including fossil fuels and biofuels, can be compared in terms of their energy output and the nature of products of combustion. You'll need to be able to calculate the quantities of heat evolved per mole, per gram and per litre for liquids for the complete combustion of fuels, as well as compare the fuels given appropriate data. In regards to energy output of fuels, we already know that the molar enthalpy is the energy that's being released per mole of fuel undergoing combustion, and we know this is measured in kilojoules per mole. 
We can compare energy output in a number of different ways. So the next way is what we call the specific energy. This is the energy that is released per gram of fuel undergoing combustion. This is measured in kilojoules per gram. And also the energy density, which is the energy released per litre of fuel, which is measured in kilojoules per litre. One thing to factor in if we're trying to work out the energy density is that we actually need to know the density of the fuel itself. So hopefully that's given as grams per litre, and we need to use that in order to calculate it. As you can see here, this little flowchart allows you to essentially convert from one set of energy units to another. If we start on the left here, we've got the molar enthalpy in kilojoules per mole. To convert it into the specific energy, which is kilojoules per gram, we'll just need to divide it by the molar mass. Uh, we can do the opposite, so multiply by the molar mass to convert back from kilojoules per gram to kilojoules per mole. If we're at kilojoules per gram, so the specific energy is given, if we want to calculate the energy density, then we need to know the density of the fuel, and we would multiply it by the density, which is hopefully in grams per litre, to convert kilojoules per gram to kilojoules per litre, and we could do the opposite to convert it back. Let's now look at how we can actually use this conversion chart. So example question four, given the enthalpy of combustion for ethanol is minus 1,371 kilojoules per mole, Part A, calculate the specific energy of ethanol in kilojoules per gram. Remember to do this, we need to know the molar mass of ethanol, which I've given it here as 46.068 grams per mole. And to convert it from kilojoules per mole to kilojoules per gram, we just then need to divide the, uh, this by the molar mass. So that will be equal to minus 1,371 divided by 46.068. This will give us an answer in kilojoules per gram, and this ends up becoming minus 29.76 kilojoules per gram. In other words, for every gram of ethanol that is combusted, it is releasing about 29.76 kilojoules worth of energy. For part B, uh, calculate the energy density of ethanol in kilojoules per litre given it has a density of 789 grams per litre. Keep in mind that the density essentially says that if we have one litre of ethanol, it has a mass of 789 grams. So to convert uh, into the energy density in kilojoules per litre, what we can do is take the specific energy in kilojoules per gram, multiply it by the density um, to work out the energy density in kilojoules per litre. We've got here our previous answer of negative 29.76, multiply that by 789. We get a value of minus 23,480, which would be in kilojoules per litre. But I'm going to round it off to three significant figures, and that will give us negative 23,500 kilojoules per litre. That concludes this series of videos on 4.1 energy, and specifically on fuels and their combustion. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.